This is Cinderella, or Cinder, or Cindy. I call her Cindy. <laughs> I have a cat now, <laughs> which I guess I was necessary. The cat was gonna have to happen eventually, right? I feel like that's a trans woman stereotype. <laughs> Cindy's done. <laughs> hey, internet computer user like me. Uh, I am May, movie person from the internet. I don't always do movies, but today I'm doing movies, and lately I've been doing movies. So let's talk about some uh, mother heckin' movies. What do you think? I saw a movie called The Dead Don't Die. Is our plan to inform people about the zombie danger before it gets dark? I guess so. Because we passed Farmer Miller's place a little while ago, do we need to inform him? Fuck Farmer Miller. Oh, okay. In the movie, The Dead Don't Die, they come back from the dead. Uh, they're zombies, and it's directed by Jim Jarmusch. Bill Murray's in it. Adam Driver's in it, playing basically the Star Wars character. And everybody else is also in it. Tilda Swinton plays a motherfucking alien. It's the weirdest goddamn movie I've seen this year, and I'm not kidding. The dead don't die. Nobody's talking about it. Looks around. Where the fuck is the discourse? Y'all, this movie is nuts. I'm very alone right now. Like, behind the camera, you will find no one, so... I just sort of look like a maniac looking around the room, screaming at the invisible people that are not here and not having discourse about the dead don't die. So anyway, the dead don't die, be wild, y'all. Uh, holy heckin' heck. I saw there was a Jim Jarmusch zombie movie and immediately rolled my eyes because um, zombies, I'm so tired of it. It's like every goddamn movie, I mean, it isn't. I mean, people aren't doing zombies quite like they used to. It really got out dead, like, done out there for a little while where I got very tired of it. So I just sort of have that reaction when somebody's like, zombie movie, where I kind of cringe. I'm like, oh, like preemptively cringe for it to um, be really boring. I cringe when I'm about to be bored. However, it is directed by Jim Jarmusch. And if you've ever seen a Jim Jarmusch movie, you know that his movies are dry, usually funny, very, very, dull intentionally, usually kind of atmospheric and psychedelic, like very painfully diegetic. In this peaceful town, on these quiet streets, something terrifying, something horrifying is coming. Excuse me, we're closed. Get away from me! <laughs> His movies have a tendency to be super like you're watching events as they unfold. Not an awful lot of, of really weird uh, narrative stuff there, at least in my experience. But then again, I haven't seen the majority of his movies, but just sort of describing his style, that's sort of where I would put it. Seeing this was weird because this movie felt like the kind of movie that Jim Jarmusch would definitely, definitely fucking do to us, but also the kind of movie that I would not have expected from him, which is great because I did not expect the ending coming, but we'll get to that. The Dead Don't Die is is sort of a movie about, <laughs> about fracking. <laughs> There's something where a bunch of corporations are doing some bad thing to the earth and it, it like moves the world's tilt very slightly, uh, basically fucking up everything. And then they were like, ah, it'll be fine. Nothing bad will happen. As most corporations say currently during our um, climate change crisis, which is definitely totally happening. It's almost like the movie's talking about that, like a metaphor. We'll get to that later. But yeah, the zombie movie, metaphor for, for global warming. So yeah, it takes place in a small town where sort of everybody's got their own sort of stories and their own motivations. Over the course of the movie, you expect some of these people to survive and fight back and actually do something pretty serious. Uh, but no, they all die. Everybody fucking dies. Maybe the worst thing I've ever seen. What was it, wild animals? So what are you thinking? I'm thinking zombies. What? The movie doesn't think that zombies are hilarious, but it also doesn't think that zombies are serious. So they're just sort of there. And also, so are the people. Everybody's trying to maintain the situation of like normalcy. Everybody's just sort of got a straight face on during the crisis where they're just sort of like, yep, we gotta kill some zombies. Gotta get the, gotta get the gear. You gotta hit, it, hit him in the head. That'll kill him. 
And then now we're gonna sit on the ground, drink a Coca-Cola, which is juxtaposed with how nonsense the movie gets near the end. It's funny, it's it's in interesting ways, I guess. Everything in the movie is, is very, very interesting. And I would say that it has a sort of humorous pace that makes the movie uh, laugh out loud funny for quite a lot of it. But then near the end is where I have a feeling that it's gonna lose a lot of people. And mostly I just wanted to talk about the ending, if that's okay, cause holy shit, the ending of this movie. <laughs> Oh, oh man, this isn't gonna end well. Uh, there are three cops in a squad car. They get trapped in the graveyard, surrounded by zombies. Adam Driver's character says, uh, we are not gonna get out of this. This is going to end badly. So everybody starts to get impatient with waiting for death to come. Meanwhile, they're also waiting for Tilda Swinton, a Scottish sword wielding lady who is also a hacker. Um, which is fun. So they're all waiting for Tilda to get there to like kill the zombies for them and save them. Uh, but alas, it doesn't happen. They don't get saved because Tilda Swinton, uh, turns out is an alien from outer space. So she just sort of comes into the cemetery, does a little bit of stabbing and then beams up into the sky, leaving the cops there to just basically die. Adam Driver and Bill Murray have a, have a, conversation about how they knew that things were gonna be bad. Like Adam Driver, the entire movie is like, things are gonna end badly. Bill Murray's like, how do you know that things are gonna end badly? And then Adam Driver, I shit you not, says, well, cause I've read the script. And then Bill Murray's like, oh, you got to read the whole script? I only got the parts where it was you and me, like our dialogue. Well, this does seem like some shit Jim would do, being Jim Jarmusch. Uh, and then they die. And then Tom Waits, who plays a homeless person in the film, uh, is on the outskirts talking about how their consumerism, their capitalism has uh, killed the world and also killed them and that just how it be. I've been telling you this is all gonna end badly. Well, that's unfortunate. So the movie is kind of this like post-capitalist uh, nihilism where it's like, yeah, global warming exists. Yeah, it's irreversible. Yeah, we're all gonna die and uh, capitalism is definitely to blame for that and, and shit, but like, yeah, I mean, what are you gonna do? Which is kind of weird, because, I mean, I, you would think that the movie would have, have more maybe than that uh, to say about that particular issue, but guess the fuck what? No, it doesn't. So it just sort of leaves you there with that, and you're like, okay. And that's sort of the reaction when you walk out of the theater. You're kind of smacked with a big old Okay, <laughs> okay, all right, sure. I have no idea what the fuck to think about the movie. I feel like I've been having that happen a lot where I'm like, I don't know what the hell to think, but I honestly prefer that in movies. I, I prefer also making videos about movies that leave me ambivalent like that because then it's like, I get to use the video as a way to sort of work out my feelings about it. I think that the movie's heart is somewhere near the right place. I think that the movie is correct about a lot of things and is very, very blatantly correct about a lot of things. But also I think the movie toys with the, the ultimate peril that we might be experiencing without necessarily an awful lot of a point. Like I don't know if the movie actually gets anywhere uh, and also, I don't know if the movie's speaking to anybody very seriously. Um, I guess it's worth mentioning that Adam Driver's character is almost jokingly a liberal, like regular sort of liberal driving a smart car, you know? Somebody who, who cares about these sort of issues, but also still drives a car, you know? Basically everybody. Uh, the movie isn't very critical of him. A matter of fact, he's like mostly the driving force of the whole movie, like he's, sort of the protagonist, even though there really isn't a protagonist. He's just the, the one that's like the most logically, rationally minded. So I guess as film goers, we sort of bond with him faster than other, other characters on screen. But at the same time, once we find out why we've done that, it's just sort of like, oh, okay, is this like one long extended screenwriting joke for you, Jim? Or did you care at all? Why pull a holy mountain here? Uh, in your weird zombie movie, I don't know. They gravitate towards things they did when they were alive. Call B. Chardonnay. Did she just say Chardonnay? 
Yeah, she did. I kind of feel like I liked the movie a lot up until it made a lot of really rash decisions near the end that were weird and somewhat successful, but did they get me anywhere? I don't know. No? I, I feel like I learned nothing. <laughs> I feel like I learned nothing, I giggled a little bit, and then I left. Is the movie bad? Uh, I don't know. But it is weird, and I feel like it's something worth seeing just for that, on that basis of being like, wow, that movie sure the fuck was weird, huh? I have no idea what I'm saying, and I'm very thirsty. Oh, but there's uh, two really good things in the movie. Uh, number one, Tilda Swinton, as always, is like, the uh, the perfect sort of NB uh, alien Scottish sword lady uh, f from our fucking dreams. You look gorgeous. Oh my. Are you in this together? She's great in the movie and wonderful and her character is great and wonderful and uh, you basically love every time she's on screen. And also sort of the movie's mindset of like who would actually kind of survive or at least survive for a little while during a zombie apocalypse are basically right wingers with a lot of guns, the police, and weebs. Also, there's a moment in the movie where Adam Driver pulls out his keys to his smart car to hand it to Tilda Swinton, and Tilda Swinton sees that there's a Star Wars keychain, which Kylo Ren, Kylo Ren, get it? God, clever. Anyway, it's funny because Tilda says, oh, I like that fiction. And it's just a funny thing to say, I like that fiction. So I've started saying that, that's a phrase that I've begun co-opting. I'm gonna start saying, instead of saying, I like that movie, I'm gonna just be like, oh, I, I rather like that fiction. So thanks Tilda, uh, or Jim, or whoever is responsible. Um, I like that line a lot. Did you know that Adam Driver is Kylo Ren? God, that must suck for him. Excuse me. <laughs> So thank you for watching. Uh, this video is just sort of a short one, I guess, uh, about The Dead Don't Night. Uh, I, you watched it, I don't have to tell you what it was about. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't done that before, and also maybe like the video if you like this video, uh, and maybe you like me, but not in like a, not in like a weird way. Don't do that, don't DM me and be like, yo, I thought we could be friends. I'm actually, kind of a handful. <laughs> anyway, if uh, you love what I'm doing over here and want to support me on Patreon, uh, consider supporting me on Patreon. God, that's redundant. I should probably come up with a better way to say that. Okay, I'm gonna do it again. If you like what I do, you should support me on Patreon. I'm gonna be making video essays again soon, so those are, that's gonna happen. Those are gonna be over there. Come on, come on down. Come on over. We love you in there. We'll give you a hug. Good to see you. Good to meet you. Hi. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Um, I love you, and goodbye.